2016, there was a signal that had been detected in Australia uh, from some um, astronomers, and uh, they were absolutely sure that they'd uh, detected uh, aliens trying to contact Earth from a star 95 light years away. So the signal would have been sent in 1922. They picked up this. There was a frenzy about it. And uh, this also happened in 2015. But they finally, uh, uh, the initial thought was absolutely, it's, it, it, it has to be aliens that from this uh, other, uh, other uh, uh, a solar system. And so, well, they found out it was nothing more than another astronomer using the microwave <laughs> in the office. And um, that reminded me of another young uh, uh, Swatch, I say Sasquatch hunter, another young one that uh, had heard as he's out in the wilderness hunting down Sasquatch. He had heard like a scream, a very bizarre scream that was so strong just seemed to come for miles, and uh, well, it turns out it was nothing more than the wind blowing the wires up high. You know, these are people that are in pursuit of beyond, into arenas that are just not real. They're pursuing what's beyond. Uh, and so I want to look at a text and to preach something that um, very interesting. Uh, but uh, need it, and uh, just something to kind of tuck away in your own pocket, uh, your backpack of Christianity. And so I'm going to use a verse to begin with to, to jump into Colossians chapter 2. Don't let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person goes, also goes into the great detail about what they have seen, and they are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Let me read that again. Such people go into great detail about what they've seen. They get puffed up by idle notions that their unspiritual mind conjures up. And they have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body is supporting uh, with the head, from whom the, uh, uh, from the supported and held together by its ligaments and, and sinews, and grows as God causes it to grow. So I want to talk about just using this text. And I just got this one and one more tonight for the, for the message. But um, I want to talk about being super spiritual, the super spiritual or the overly spiritual. So I want to talk about how they operate and the type of person that they are. So, you know, being uh, that we're growing, there's always going to be some. And they're going to slip in from other churches or sometimes even be created in our own church. But we're going to have to deal with and, and understand the super spiritual. And so how do they operate? Well, these people hold themselves to a, to a higher standard. They just do. They're very keen about things, and they go, like the Bible said, the verse, they go into greater detail. Okay? It's not just the, the thought, but the greater detail. They go into these greater details, and so, uh, you know, the greater detail in prayer. Uh, and, and the greater detail of praise and, and the greater detail of um, oftentimes doctrines. They want to look at it in a greater way and uh, they want to, you know, these people, again, how they operate is they want to fast about everything. They want to fast. Now, is that wrong? No. But they're super spiritual. They're beyond what their normal on fire Christian is. There's a there, there's a level above, and, and uh, 
very quick. They give a verse uh, or, or uh, a very uh, quickly, you know, they're telling you what God's revealed to them or showed them. And uh, so their, their attentions are on special revelation from God. They give a lot of emphasis to dreams, visions, manifestations, revelations, and, and they seem to uh, always frame these in a language of spiritual dimensions. They give a lot of credence to those. You'll often hear, God told me. God told me blah, 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 blah. God told me blah, 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 blah. And, uh, oh, it's very alluring. Huh? God told you? God spoke to you? And it, 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 it seems right. And actually, it's, it's um, kind of impossible to, to counter state when they say, well, God told me. God told me. Well, I have a hard time with God told me. A very hard time with that. When somebody states that, my antennas perk up. God told me. And, um, you know, one friend giving another friend a word. Now, they know about the situation. And uh, I'm not impressed about one friend giving another friend a word when they know about what's going on. Okay, if, if you didn't know about what was going on and you had a word, well, okay, no, that's impressive. Or I saw one pastor giving another pastor a word, and, uh, you know, a word, no, God told me to tell you, and... Uh, I had a mental challenge in my mind. No, God didn't tell you to tell him. You only had lunch with him yesterday. And now you're trying to bring encouragement or whatever. All right. Give him a word, but I take challenge. I will challenge when somebody says, God told me. Oh, really? God told you. I'll challenge that. See, I've been guilty of the same thing. I remember years back as a disciple where uh, there's, a, there's a guy in the church that, you know, new convert, following him up, and, and he failed. And through a few things, I happened to find out about that. And, and uh, you know, and, and so I'm thinking, well, God showed me about this. I went to my pastor, and I told him, you know, God showed me, and my pastor shot back. Oh, you know, yeah, God showed me what happened. My pastor shot back. Oh, really? Really? Well, that helps God showed you. How good is that? What help is that? God showed you. Why didn't God show you before the fall actually happened? That would have helped, Rick. I got an instant revelation. Stop being spiritual. Stop. But to the super spiritual, everything is spiritualized, or most everything. God's always teaching you something, showing you something, and, and everything is spiritualized. And lots of things, way more than normal, is demonic. Everything is a, an attack of the devil. The slightest problem, you get a ticket from a cop. It's demonic. <laughs> you have a head nail that hurts. It's... It's this is evidence of a demonic conspiracy against me. Take me out <laughs> to stop the work of God. <clears throat> now, it's, it's a lot more real than what you think. Being super spiritual. We somehow like to operate in extremes. Even with Scripture, they take it to extreme. extremes. Have you ever... Heard of the UPC Church, United Pentecostal Church, UPC, or, or there's other ones that are called, they're very much the same, but they're uh, uh, kind of an offshoot. They're called Jesus Only. And so when you run into these folks, you're going you're gonna to see that um, the women, uh, they could use some painting. They don't believe in makeup. They don't believe in jewelry and... and uh, they have dresses and a long sleeve down to their knees, and, and, and they don't cut their hair because that's their covering. Their hair's their covering. And so what they do is they take these verses, 
to extremes. You know, ladies, you can be attractive without being seductive. You can be attractive and still be modest. Every barn needs painting. Every old barn really needs painting. <laughs> and uh, uh, my wife is beautiful. <laughs> but I had one guy in, in, in the church. He's, God bless him, he's a good man today. I don't want to say his name because he's a very good man. He's got his balance. But I remember when he first got saved, he read a scripture somewhere in the Bible where uh, I think it was David that made a statement that, that um, yeah, that I'm not going to deal with mankind until I seek your face. And so what he would do is he'd wake up in the morning, and he actually lived with another guy who was in the military, but he'd hide his face. He'd hide his face from the other guy. He, said he didn't want to see the other guy's face until he got to prayer and talked to God first. Literally, he'd hide his face. Now, today is a pastor. I'm not going to say his name. I want to, but I won't. <laughs> Extremes. So, that's how they operate. Super spiritual. And, uh, let's talk secondly about um, the type of people they are. They actually view themselves as being humble. They come across lowly. However, it's actually a false humility because actually they think themselves to be on a higher plane than the, than the rest. They're just a little higher plane. That's how they think. And so so this, this is false humility is what it is. And their humbleness masks a pride that... They've been chosen. I'm just extra committed, extra in tune with God. I'm, I'm, but I'm humble. <laughs> and uh, uh, they set themselves apart because they have, quote, experiences. And again, these revelations. And they honestly believe that they're more spiritual than other people. So this humility is a mask, nothing more than a mask. You can also see them, not just by this false humility, but also by a, a resistance of being taught. <laughs> because they think they know better. They trust in their own thoughts. They think they know better. And unless it's, of course, a proven man of God, tells them otherwise, everyone else, they know. <clears throat> I know what's best. I know. I've been around. I know. They've lost connection. Somehow they have a rocky relationship with church folks oftentimes. <clears throat> and uh, the more spiritual they get, the more dangerous they get. I've seen children of the super spiritual reach 18 and they say, I'm <coughs> out of here. The children of the super spiritual, listen to what I'm saying. The children of the super spiritual will run when they can. Now, they may not rebel, they may not, but ju they just want out from under your insanity. Super spiritual. <coughs> I remember a father, as I'm having a, a, a dinner, we were actually sitting in Mexico, and, uh, you know, they had television there as we were eating, eating uh, uh, tacos. He had his 10-year-old son with him. But his son eating a taco, he just looked up, and the father had his back to the TV. And the son just looked up, and the father immediately barked and said, don't look at that, son. Don't look at that. And, you know, I couldn't help but I glanced up. It's like, like an aquarium. Uh, Dad, you pushing your kid out the door. I would to God that uh, the kid comes back now. <laughs> uh, he's 18, he's gone, and he's been gone, and, and, and it's been a very sad story for the parents. 
very sad because children of the super spiritual will get out from under you as quick as they possibly can. And they may serve God, but they'll be glad they're gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you're super spiritual, what you don't realize is that when people talk to you and, and um, anyone with a basic level of discernment immediately picks up and there's an inner alarm that goes on, <laughs> super spiritual. They immediately pick it up. And you think that you're impressing, but actually they're thinking, you've got emotional problems and mental issues. That's what they're thinking. It's not impressive. To be super spiritual is not impressive. You're just flying your colors, but you got spiritual problems. And finally, uh, it gets dangerous because you're so prone to deception. They trust themselves constantly, debating even with preaching at times in their own mind. You don't know that, but they are. And uh, their balance, their sense of balance is eclipsed by their own sense of spiritual superiority. So how do they get weird? How do they get there? And let's, let, let's just label it. It is weird. To be spiritual, super spiritual, it's weird. You're in your own orbit. They're, they're, they're in their, their feet don't touch the earth. They're not in touch with normal life. And you can be annoying. <laughs> it can be really annoying. But, you know, most people can endure, but it kind of freaks them out just a bit. Your super spiritualness. It freaks people out just a bit. And I'm just being honest with you guys. So how'd they get there? Well, many times they've been influenced by another super spiritual person that they looked up to. They wanted to be like. They were impressed. And so they began to kind of take their cues from another super spiritual person. And can I tell you, to be super spiritual, you actually drive people away. Again, those that are aware, <laughs> they're aware, um, they'll think you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. You're in another world. And like the Bible said, they've lost, how did they get there? They've lost connection. They've lost it. They've lost connection with the head. And in this case of the Bible, it's talking about the pastor. And it says they've lost connection with the body that holds up the head. They've lost connection. And it seems like they're ultra spiritual, but in actuality, excuse me, in actuality, the Bible says they're unspiritual. Did you read that? Where is it? No, we didn't get it. Where is it here? How did we get there? What happened there? <laughs> or did you do something back there? Anyways, whatever. But it says they're unspiritual in their mind. In other words, they think they're spiritual, but they're actually carnal and just soulish. They're thinking in their head. It's not spiritual at all. It's unspiritual. Where's that? Where's that at here? I'll tell you a great deal about what they have seen. They are puffed up in idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Unspiritual, <coughs> though they're puffed up like they're all that. But in actuality, they don't have a clue. They're unspiritual. That's what the Bible says. In Romans 12, or chapter 10, verse 12, it says they have 
a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Not, in, not according to real, solid truth. They got zeal, <laughs> but they're dangerous. So let's talk about coming down to earth. God's not looking for super spiritual people to help the church grow. You know what he's looking for? Just ordinary folk. Just the ordinary folk. And um, can I tell you that the leaders of our fellowship, let me talk about the leaders of our fellowship. Dave Suspansky, Paul Campbell up north, Terry Haynes in the Midwest. And we go further, a little bit further, we get to Ray Ruby in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. And then we got Richard Ruby in Houston, Texas. Houston? Yeah. Yeah. And San Antonio, Texas. And then we've got, uh, you know, we've got, um, you know, what we got? we've got Paul Stevens in, in El Centro. And then we've got all the way up in Oregon, we've got, uh, we, what did I say? El what? El Paso, yeah. Okay, all right. El Paso. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got, you know, uh, uh, Kevin Foley up in, uh, um, you know, up in uh, uh, Oregon and, uh, you know, all these are conference centers. And they got Tom Payne in Gallup, New Mexico. All of them are conference centers. Every one of them, I've worked alongside. I've had preach for me. I've preached for every one of them. They're friends. They're friends. And not one of them is super spiritual. Not one of them. They're just down home guys. They're not saying, the Lord told me. God's been dealing with me. And, and they, you know, no, just normal folk. I know Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Wayman Mitchell. I know Pastor Greg Mitchell. It's just down home guys. None of them are super spiritual. Are they effective? Pastor Joe Campbell, he's got his conference. Again, a good friend. Preach for him. Preach for me. <laughs> it's, yeah. So let's talk about becoming right. Remember Goldilocks and the three bears? Too hot. Too cold. <laughs> Just right. Too hard. Too soft. Just right. Let's go for the just right. You don't need to be too spiritual, too carnal. But just right. But in order to get there, you got to realize, I think I'm a bit abnormal. Tell yourself that. I think I'm a bit abnormal or a bit off because that's the beginning of coming back into balance. You're not evil. You're not evil. But maybe abnormal. Come back in to balance. Oh, and I forgot to mention Pastor Olson. Our pastor has a conference. He's not super spiritual. The furthest thing from. But he's good. So here's some answers. Take your cues. Take your cues from other people that are living for God. Okay? Take your cues of how to operate, how to act. How to be. Are they doing that stuff? God told me. God talked to me. God this. God that. Did this. No. It's just like, hey, what's for dinner? You know? Oh, you got a problem? Well, well let's pray. Let's just believe God to do a miracle. But it's not like, not everything's not super spiritual. They're not seeing demons and everything. They're not looking at life that way. And then, so take your cues from those that are living for God. That'll help you. Get your balance for people living for God. When Kimberly and Kaylin, when they had gone to Malta with us, I had one thing in the back of my mind. They won't grow up overseas, meaning they're not going to mature over there. I've seen it. I've been around. When missionaries go and their kids leave when they're 8 years old, they come back 5 years later. Now they're 12, 13. <laughs> and they come back 5 years later, and you know what? They're acting like they're eight years old. Silly, goofy. It's like, it's odd, but you, but it just takes a little while. 
They get back and they're acting stupid and all the other 13 years are going, what's up with you? Because they're acting like a little kid. They don't mature overseas. Missionary kids don't. Kimberly and Cannon came back and they were silly and goofy. But so quick, <laughs> so quick, they took their cues. They saw, uh-oh, they picked up the cues, boom, 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 and they, they bounced right up to the maturity level. They took cues from all the others that were their age. Take your cues from people that are living for God. Now, if you want to say that God's been dealing with me, praise God. God's been dealing with me a lot. But I don't know if you ever heard me say God told me. God spoke to me. That's a rare, rare thing. Now, God dealing with me, okay. Doing well, but God spoke to you? God told you? Really? How? So don't announce your spiritual revelations to other people. Just don't do that. God didn't tell everybody else. If he told you, well, then keep it to yourself because you do look odd and you're not doing yourself a favor by sharing, you know, things that, that you know, talk to me. Talk to me, and I'll tell you. No, that's weird. I'll tell you. So, you'll be thought to be wise if you learn how to just be quiet. People will think you're really wise. It's the Bible. Then also, if you've lost connection, like the Bible tells us, there's lost connection. But how about you connect again to headship? The whole body that supports the head. Connect again, and then, like I said, and I got a little ahead of myself here, my next thought is take extra care when using God's name. You can say God's been dealing with me. Okay, that's, that's so easy. That's not, you know, there's something going on in your heart, and, you know, everybody understands that, but when you put God's name on it, you instantly lose. God told me to tell you. You know what? Instantly when somebody says that, they've lost credibility to me. No, just, just say, I feel like I need to tell you this. But don't spiritualize, spiritualize it. God told me to tell you. Okay? That's dumb. It's dumb. It's super spiritual. Say, you know, I feel like I just need to tell you this. I don't know if it's God or not. I hope it helps you, but just say it. But God told me. How did God tell you? Did he whisper in your ear? Was a thought that came to your head? How do you know it's God? How do you know it's not the devil? So just, you know, I feel like I want to tell you this. I'm hoping it helps you. I'm thinking it's God dealing with me, but I'm not sure, but let me tell you this. You want to say what you want to say. But don't put God's name on it. He's real particular about that. In fact, the Bible says you put God's name on it and it doesn't happen. <laughs> that person that said that should be rocked. Stoned. Remember one time Pastor Mitchell walked out with a bucket of rocks. He was preaching at a conference. <laughs> a bucket of rocks. He says, hey, all you that say, thus saith the Lord, if it doesn't come to pass, he picks up the bucket, the rock. He says, they rock you, stone you. He's serious. He said, don't play with that. By the way, in all the time I've known Pastor Mitchell and all the con conferences I've gone to, one time he said uh, to a person, God told me to tell you this. One time. Now, I believe that. That's, I totally believe that. But it doesn't happen off the cuff, okay? God will deal with you about saying something to somebody. And, but when you put God's name, God told me to tell you, you better be super, super, super sure or you're going to lose credibility. Remember one time I talked to Pastor Olson. Pastor, I really feel like God gave me a verse for you. I went and I read him the verse, and he's like, okay. <laughs> I, all right, well, I did what I was supposed to do, but, <laughs> you know. Anyways, it just doesn't impress anybody. Praise God. So, get real. 
to get real is to not elevate yourself but to descend. It's not to venture higher. It's actually to journey downward. Hallelujah. To get real is just an ever-increasing love for people and an ever-increasing service for people. <coughs> Not to be super spiritual. So forget about pursuing things beyond Sasquatch, aliens. Forget about pursuing things beyond. There's enough stuff right here in the boundaries. Plenty of work to be done. Plenty of lives to be touched. Plenty of needs that that you can meet, you can minister to. Plenty to do for God without going, Woo! these different weird directions. So how do we deal with this super spiritual? How do we deal with it when they cross our path? Well, first of all, maybe... I had to go through this myself. Maybe there's a log in our own eye. Maybe we got a log in our own eye and can't see the sliver. Or we do see a sliver, but we don't realize there's a log in our own eye. And so uh, the judge could be far more serious than their issues. So we need to be careful, very, very careful. And then also, we got to be careful we're not the pot calling the kettle black. <clears throat> Are we just enforcing our own spiritual norms? It's our spiritual norms. Are we just enforcing that upon another? That's the pot calling the kettle black. But what we do know is that if we do cross their path, it's leave no doubt that you love them. Leave no doubt. Because they need friends. They're weird. They need friends. And they need a friend that can challenge them rather than listen to their rant. Just challenge them. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Really? Really? And then you direct them in your enthusiasm and your passion. You kind of channel that to, to just some healthy, useful things. Hey, just stop it. Just stop. Let's just get real. Let's go set up the tables for uh, the donuts <laughs> or whatever. Just get real. <sighs> We're done. Let's pray. Father. We need you to help us tonight, God. And just these things that you've taught us, I pray. Open our eyes. Just help us to understand and to have compassion. And I pray, God, just a wisdom for each and every one of us and even to challenge ourselves. God, show me. If I be the one, show us all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. With your head bowed, your eyes closed. You know, we... We're just real in this place tonight. I needed Jesus. So messed up. I didn't want to go to hell like I spoke about this morning. And the preacher actually touched on that at the very tail end of the service. It freaked me out. I thought for sure I was going to end up in hell. So that got me saved. But oh my gosh, when I bent my knee and then sensed God accepted me. That absolutely blew me away. God, you know me, but you love me? That's what caused me to get up and to go on and live for God. Hell got me to my knees, but love set me running to do for God, to be for God, to herald the gospel message tonight. God wants to do something powerful in your life. And you're not going to get a whole lot of chances like this. Unless, of course, you frequent a church that preaches truth. But maybe tonight you're here and you just want God. 
I'm not asking you to be a member of the church. No, you just want God to forgive you, change you. You want to just get right with him. You recognize he died for your sins, and you just want to love him for that. Lift your hand if you haven't already, just to signify it. Preacher, I do want to pray and get right with God tonight. Quickly, lift your hand. Unsaved and backslidden. Hallelujah. Okay, for God's